Okay, it looks like we can be here, all of us. So, hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to our next session of uh, Connection Wednesday. I hope you can see me and hear me well. Uh, today's topic is dedicated to buckling analysis, an important piece of connection assessment. And our today's presenters, uh, obviously it's me, Jan Kubicek, uh, product engineer um, of Idea Statica, and my uh, colleague fellow, Alexander Shotkovsky. Hello, Alex. Hello. Hello. And yes, as usual, we are running on the GoTo webinar platform. So it means uh, the uh, audience is muted by default, but feel free to ask uh, questions during the webinar during the session you can type them into the questions sub window and we'll try to answer continuously during the webinar uh, if there still be will be any questions left unanswered uh, you will get the answers after the webinar via email message and what's the agenda for today so yeah buckling connections and why to care about the buckling, that's the first part. Uh, theory behind and three practical examples presented by Alex. And at the end, uh, the notes about the uh, uh, cold formed profiles or the class four uh, cross sections according to our design standards. And we would like to start with uh, the first poll uh, because we are curious about your usage and uh, your standard uh, workflows. So do you check the buckling at your joints? I will launch, um, yes, the poll also here in the platform. So now you should be able to put your answers so you can select from never, uh, rarely, often, or always. So I will dedicate a few more seconds for this and uh, use this part for the question. Uh, if the buckling is uh, even uh, important for the connection design, it can be a complex topic, but the bottom line is that it's solvable. So in a nutshell, every steel plate member is prone to buckling if we don't speak about extremely thick plates or like um, purely uh, loaded by tension. So um, in every other case, it's not the question whether it will buckle, but when it will buckle. So that's what we will be speaking about today. And yes, I see that no more um, response coming. So I will close this poll and yeah, share the results. So I hope uh, you can see them now. Okay, so the winner is often and rarely. So that's great. Uh, never is all, only 12%. So in 88% of cases are designs of uh, steel connections. Uh, it's part of your job to do the buckling analysis. So yeah, it's quite clear that the topic is important. And here I can pass the word to my colleague and the floor is yours, Alex. Okay, thank you, Jan. I will share my screen, just a minute. A minute, I have to change it. Just a moment, please. Show my screen. And it will be no just. Oh, it's not the correct one. Okay. 
this one. So can you see already my screen? Yes, it's there. Yes, that's fine. So welcome again, everybody. Uh, so the question, the first question, what we have is why to care about the buckling? It means that uh, why? Because if you are doing uh, some stress analysis, it is uh, nice, but it doesn't provide any information about buckling as a fail mode. So that's why we have to, to care about it also. The other thing is that uh, we have uh, connections. Connections are also part of the structure. And it means if the connections would fail, uh, it would be uh, have also an impact of the complete structure. And the next thing, uh, what why we care about the buckling is that uh, if you have some complex joints, uh, there are some haunches, openings, stiffness, and so on. And even at that small parts, uh, the local buckling can uh, can have a can be an issue for, for us. Uh, and what about the code? If we take uh, the Euro code, there's uh, some information about the local load multiplier uh, alpha. And the code tells us, or the producer of the code uh, told us that we should have the multiplier bigger than 15 for plastic analysis, 10 for elastic. But it is for the bar model of the structure. And in this case, we do not need to check the buckling of these members. But the other thing is when we go to the joints. For the joints, we do not have any specific recommendations in the code. So what to do? Uh, in Idea Statica, we decided to, to take care of it and we uh, divided our buckling uh, issue into three groups. The first group are the plates which are connecting the individual members. What is not, for example, this one where you have a beam and the diagonal or, or or other member is connected directly with the member uh, with the plate. Then we have also some stiffening plates in the joints, like ribs, short haunches, and other, which is, for example, this case when we have a footing with some some ribs. And the third part or third. Uh, agenda can be about closed sections and thin walled sections like like this one uh, idea statica uh, enables the buckling analysis which is based on geometry linear analysis and on material nonlinear analysis so it means it does not be handled no imperfections on it so nonlinear analysis with imperfections and the results what we offer are buckling modes. And for each buckling mode, uh, we are offering a critical load. And this critical load is presented by the multiplier of the loads, which are acting on the on the on the joints. So it means that if you are if you have results in the idea statica, you get for each shape, you get a factor with the critical multiplier. So this means that if we you we if we have uh, plates connecting the individual members, this means the first group what I have shown before, uh, you should have this critical load multiplier 15 or even higher, which is recommended by the by the code. And uh, for this example, we will, I will 
show you how to handle it and what we can do with it. So I will, I will just a moment. So we will start a connection and we will prepare I'll prepare a joint, so we will take this one and we will take the last example here in the design and create a project. So we will take the vertical member and we will change it to a different shape. For example, this one, this cross section. And also we will change the model type to, to normal force and shear forces and the forces we will put into the into the boards. Then in the load effects we will give here some Forces minus 20, minus 20, minus 40. So you can see we have here the load 40 kilonewtons. And we will add the operation, the connecting plate operation. We will choose the boards M16, okay. And change the dimensions a little bit. So the thickness of the plates we will give six millimeters with 140 and the same for the other part, six millimeters and the uh, 140. So, so this is our, our joint, very easy. Uh, uh, you can, if you want, you can find this example also on our web pages. And now we go to check. And here under check, we select the stress strain buckling analysis. So, and you can see everything is green, so it's okay, but the buckling is 6.81. Let's go to the top buckling. And you can see we have six shapes. Uh, if you would like to have more or less, you can go to code setup. And in code setup, it is the last uh, sentence number of buckling marks number six. So you have you are free to change it eventually. So it means that if we are looking at the buckling shapes, mesh, deformed. You can see what, what's going on if the lock buckling is enabled. So you can see these buckling shapes. And for example, here, the other bucklings, it's mostly connected with the main member. But for main member, if you really have more than 15, then it's OK. So what we have, uh, how can we continue? The one possibility is to make these plates a little bit thicker. So let's go here to thickness and change them to 10 millimeters and go back to check and make the calculation again. And you can see buckling is already 
more than 15. So it would be right now, it would be okay. But we have also a other possibility not to cal calculate the buckling and to get it more than 15, but we can uh, simulate a second order calculation. And it means that we should, I will change this thickness to eight and here also to, to eight. And according to some research papers, we have the possibility to uh, simulate the second order calculation analysis for such uh, connections in this way that we add here to this uh, vertical column uh, horizontal force in the value of one tenth of the of the normal force. So it means we would put here minus two, minus two, and here the four kilonewton as a shear force. And you can see it. And now if we make the calculation, and remember I put there not 10 millimeter thickness, but only eight millimeters. But in this case, if we have all green results for plates, boards, and uh, welds, it means that also this type of connection is okay. And we do not need to make the buckling analysis because we implemented the second order analysis here in this our connection. So we will continue with our presentation. So it means the summary of, of this example is that always make the check for the buckling or use a different analysis. For example, you can take Abacus or other uh, software to ensure that the buckling is okay for this connection. And in case of insufficient factor, you can either make the plates thicker or to make some changes in the connection, or you can even simulate the second order effects. Yeah, so this is the uh, way, the approach you can also use. And for this, we have some, we have some uh, pa research papers, I will show it to you. For example, here on our web pages, you can find uh, the verification about uh, about this uh, possibility, how to apply the second order analysis. So it is here, you can see it, then he can, you can go through it then if you want. There are a lot of information here. So I will close it and go back again to the presentation. So, so it was this one. Let's go to the second example where we have a, a footing and some members and we would like to add some ribs to it. Well, again, for in the code, we do not have any special information how to handle such, such cases. Uh, it's definitely uh, true that the coefficient 15 is too conservative for such cases. And uh, they were prepared some research papers and they recommend a safer boundary uh, with, uh, with the value of three from two to four. Yeah, so it depends because this value depends on the shape and supports. And uh, right now it is so that if you have uh, the, these boundary conditions, so everything, the plate is has boundary on all four play uh, or four, all four edges. Uh, 
the result, the value can be found in the code and the critical factor has to be bigger than two. If we have boundary conditions like in the first case, if we had the, the member added uh, connected with the plates to the to the uh, to the rest of the structure, it's again can be found this number and it is the critical factor should be bigger than 15. But if we have, for example, this one, one edge of the plate is free. Uh, according to the research papers, the critical factor can be bigger than three, but the information is missing in the code. So only uh, according to the research papers, you, you can be sure that the, the number three is, is okay. And if we have uh, boundary conditions on two edges, the both two edges are free, then uh, again, you do not you cannot find it in the code, but according to the research papers, this critical factor should be bigger than four. And uh, especially for the American uh, market, if you are uh, making uh, assessments according to ASD, please multiply these factors with 1.5. So these are here the examples what we are, we are talking about. Uh, if you have such uh, su such uh, edge, such connections, or such plates, siphoning plates, here are these examples, and here are the critical factors for these plates. And let's go to the example number two. Oh, just a moment, I will move it to to the. To the window here this is this one what we have prepared I may when I make the calculation again buckling we've got the value 2.25 and we, we are looking at the buckling shapes here in the tab, the first buckling shape looks like this one. Yeah, the second one is again connected with the with the uh, with the plate with the stiffening plate. Here the third one again, but in the fourth shapes you can even see some some buckling in the main uh, member. And here, for example, it's connected with the main member. So it means uh, we should take care also about it. But you can see here we have the factor 19. So it is above 15. So we do not have to care about it. So again, what to do with it? If I go back to design, we can put some stiffening plates here at here at the at the rib and if we are going back to check and make the calculation again so we get buckling 18 even 18 and, and if we are looking at the buckling shapes yeah it's connected here with the stiffening plate and even the shape number, the, the bucking shape number two is already uh, moved to the second worth buckling shape, but it's again bigger than 15. So this joint is okay. So I will go back again to the presentation. And uh, we have, of course, some cases which are not uh, covered. For example, this one, you have a gusset plate with a diagonal and the question, big question from probably everyone is what to use. Is it four or is it even more? 
Definitely, it's again, 15 is probably really too conservative, but right now it is so. There are some researches in this way, and we will, we hope that we will get some information very soon to be able to, to tell you uh, the correct values for such, such plates. Uh, right now, you should you should be uh, you should take uh, care about uh, more deeply about it. So let's go to the first part of the of the of the of the joints. Uh, we have uh, closed uh, closed sections and thin walled sections. Uh, they can carry uh, um, higher loads but uh, uh, some deformations, bigger deformations can occur at such uh, closed section, cross sections. And the plates of these cross sections can buckle in inelastic range. And that's why we implemented in idea statica geometrically and materially nonlinear analysis. These uh, formulas we have implemented are recognized by the CIDECT design guides. And we have some limits for them uh, for, the, for, the, for the analysis. Uh, for the local buckling, we have 3% of the smaller side of the cross sections for ULS and 1% for the SLS um, metal. And maybe uh, some uh, some diagram how it looks like. Uh, for example, if you look at the green curve for the regular members, you can see uh, if you are uh, if the members are loaded by compressions, there are much bigger uh, forces can be applied than if you have a thin walled member uh, where which are mostly failing by bucking. So let's go to the third example where I will show you how to how to uh, imp how to use the analysis. So just a moment, please. So here is our uh, example, and I go to code setup, and here I will first the local deformation check, but I will do not enable the geometrical nonlinear analysis. We will, we can look at the results how it looks like right now. So we've got some results, and here you can see uh, for the general uh, uh, deformation of the whole joint, we have we have no, 0 0.97, but the local deformation is 0 0.6, which is of course uh, smaller than the 3%. But now I will change it. And I will switch on the geometrically nonlinear analysis, and we will look what will what we what difference we will get. So, calculate. So, and now you can see both values have changed. We have even bigger deformation for the whole structure, for the whole joint, and even the local deformation is bigger than before. But nevertheless, if you have such joints, such connections, 
please make as if possible both uh, calculations because sometimes it can happen uh, excuse me sometimes it can happen that if you do not have checked the geometric analysis it can happen that uh, it the values goes in the other direction so always check both both ways so this was the third example and we will we will go to the next part and these are the cold form steel profiles cold form steel profiles uh, according to your your code these are these profiles which uh, local buckling occur before the yield stress and what's very important uh, idea statica uh, is uh, generally uh, uh, is generally made for structures where we have boarded connections uh, with plates bigger than three millimeters or equal to three millimeters and for welded connections thickness of the plates is are bigger than four millimeters that's a very important thing uh, so it means what to do with the cold form steel profiles which are uh, thinner than the three or four millimeters so it means that uh, our components uh, or the checks for of our components like boards welds plates uh, cannot be applied to these uh, cold form members which are uh, smaller than these three or four millimeters and uh, you should apply a different or replace these checks with another with the formulas which are in the in the in the code for thin for cold mom for steel profiles but uh, good information or big information for you uh, we have uh, for the standard boards we have already the table 8.4 of the euro code is already implemented in in the idea statica software and we have of course uh, for those who are dealing with the cold form steel profiles we have of course on our web pages we have some some hints uh, some recommendations uh, you can which you can be uh, you can follow and these recommendations are these perform always the buckling this point one the second one is uh if possible, limit the von Mises stresses to yield strength or even lower. And uh, remember, this local buckling uh, in the joints can distribute the internal forces in the components. So even if you have uh, uh, some uh, analysis in idea statica, please make some uh, some differences between. 100% analysis and uh, and the results so have a gap there and of course it uh, it's connected with the third, fourth point stiffness of components can be different due to different failure modes and as i said already before such some components are the checks for this components are made for standard members uh, whereas and other things can has to be checked uh, uh, in a different way not in idea statica so and that's all from my side sites today i will pass again to to jan okay thank you alex so I try to make myself the presenter right now. Okay, and this leads us this uh, cold form topic 
leads us to the second poll. Um, yeah, I can turn the cam on again. So I hope you can also see me. So, um, have you ever dealt with the buckling of the cold form profiles? I will launch the poll also in the platform so you should see the options never or participated on a project with them or done the assessment by myself so i will leave it open for a while and you've heard quite a big piece of theory behind buckling presented by alex so to cut this or a long story short, don't forget to calculate the first critical buckling factors. But it's simple. If it is just the local issue with the factor over four, you will be always fine. If the stability of the of the plate you are an analyzing can influence the stability of the whole structure, the euro code at least requires that 15 is what you should be aiming for. So that's what you should remember at least from this session and no more votes coming here so i will close it and you should see uh the results here so never is the winner okay so that's maybe good because uh, the cold formed uh, sections can be tricky and uh, not all of the design codes are covering these and it's not always clear how to solve them but still 38 percent of you are dealing with uh, cold form sections so uh, i hope at least some of this information were useful for you and i'm coming back to to my screen so hiding this one and are we back in the presentation? Not yet. Here we are. Okay. So some space uh, for your questions. Probably uh, the the most often one uh, was uh, related to the uh, approach with the one tenth of the normal force to be input uh, as a shear force. Yeah. So that's something what's uh, coming from some research and yeah some parts of uh, design code so i i just jump uh, into our web page uh you've probably get the link i will share one more time so this is uh the specific uh article about the research this verification uh, paper gusset play design and in this pdf file you can see uh what was the goal for uh for the very verification and at the end you can see the summary and the references so if you're interested yeah feel free to go through it and you will realize why exactly one tenth could be used for uh, the shear load that's uh, one of the questions most often asked. Uh, I hope the rest was uh, successfully answered during the session by me or by my colleagues. Um, and if I jump back to the presentation, so you can see it now, I hope it's okay here. Oh, fine. And what? What's coming next? Uh, it's still Q&A or isn't it? Okay, here we are. The May 4th, uh, the Global User Day. That's a huge event prepared by Idea Statica. And one of the biggest points uh, is what's new in coming release. So Idea Statica version 23. Uh, it's coming in the two, maybe three weeks. Uh, I didn't do the, the math yet. so. Uh, Please be there, and if you're curious what's new in the fe features and maybe the new parts of the software, you will see it there. And as usual, with our webinars, after the session, uh, you will get a very brief survey. So please fill it so we will know 
what was interesting for you and what we can adjust and improve for the next sessions. Uh, the recordings will be available probably by tomorrow on our YouTube channel. And if you are not our users yet, you haven't tried the, the software, uh, please get the trial version on our web page. And yeah, we know that quite a lot of engineers um, are keen to learn more, to study deeply about the software, about the methods and the theory behind. So please visit our support and learning section in our uh, web page. And that's the reason why we also prepared this uh, educational part, our e-learning platform, uh, new campus we call it. Uh, you can find several courses dedicated to both, to steel connection design, steel member design, as well as for concrete design. So don't be shy and try it, uh, it's great. And that could be it for today. So thank you, Alex, for your presentation. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of the week and have a nice Easter. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.